Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. You're watching Steady Invest. I wanted to make a quick video about why HRO is my favorite ETF in Canada, which is the Horizons All in One Growth ETF. And the way I look at HRO is if I didn't want to manage my investments whatsoever, but I didn't want to pay 2% plus in fees for mutual funds, and I didn't want a robo advisor, and I wanted to kind of get the best returns and just fund my money, that's where I put my money into HRO. And what I like about HRO is that for new investors, you're able to diversify globally, but at the same time, it doesn't sacrifice the growth potential that the ETF has. That being said, because HGrow is a growth ETF, in the short term, it could be volatile, but it's a long-term winner, especially if you're paying a 0.5% fee. Now, I do believe there are better ETFs out there than HGrow, but at that point, you would need to pick your own ETFs or stocks, which in my opinion is more rewarding, but requires more research and work on your part. Again, H grows for people that don't want to do anything but fund money into their account. So if you're a new investor or have your money tied up in mutual funds and want to just fund your account, H grows my favorite and I'm going to show you why. But before I do, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Horizons Growth ETF Portfolio. It trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under H grow. The management expense ratio is 0.16%. However, the ETF is subject to fees of underlying ETFs, and those come to about 0.28%. So in total, you're looking at 0.44%, and let's say 0.5% just to make things easy. So we're looking at $5 of fees for every $1,000 invested. Versus your 2 or 2.5% management expense ratios when you're investing in mutual funds, which would be $20 or $25 every $1,000 invested. Looking at the holdings, there's about 33% in U.S. large caps, 22.75% in the NASDAQ 100, 20.82% in international markets, 15.81% in Canadian stocks, and 6.72% in European stocks. And don't worry if that sounds like gibberish right now, we're getting into more details shortly. So when you buy HGrow, you're essentially buying this portfolio of these different ETFs. So you don't have to do anything except fund your money and then it creates the portfolio for you by giving you worldwide exposure. And what's important is this portfolio targets a long-term asset allocation of at least 99% in equities. And what this means is that HGrow is investing in the price appreciation of stocks and not bonds. And right now, bonds aren't very good because interest rates are low, yet they still carry risk, not as much as stocks, but the reward is much, much less. And the reason they're put into portfolios is to soften the blow when things go rough. But the way I look at it, if you're investing for the next 10, 20, or 30 years, why do you care what happens in the short term if your portfolio drops 10% instead of 20%? You still lost a lot of money. And this will hurt your long-term gains. So I'm going to use QuestWealth, the robo-advisor, as an example. Their aggressive one, for instance, is 100% equity, just like HGrow. And the more conservative you get, you see 80% equity, 20% fixed income, which are bonds. Balanced, 60% equity, 40% fixed income. Income, 60% fixed income, 40% equity. And then conservative, 80% income, 20% equity. The way I look at it, if you were a retiree and wanted to go with Quest Wealth, then maybe conservative would make sense. Looking at Wealth Simple, another robo advisor, this is their most aggressive ETF portfolio. And you can see they have 16.5% in bonds. That's no good in my opinion. The two other all equity, all in one ETFs are Vanguard's all equity ETF portfolio, VEQT, and BlackRock's iShare core equity ETF portfolio, XEQT. But I like HGrow's holdings much more than the other two. For starters, you have about 55% in U.S. equities, whereas with Vanguard, you have 42% and BlackRock 47%, and neither of them hold an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100, which are the 100 biggest non-financial companies in the U.S., which are mainly technology. Again, we'll get to that in a moment. And another reason, we only have about 16% in Canadian equities, and Canada only makes up about 3% of the entire world's economy. And there's research out there that people have a bias to investing toward their own country more than they should. So with Vanguard, they allocate about 30% of the portfolio to Canadian stocks, and BlackRock about 23%. And in my opinion, U.S. equities are the place to be if you want growth. Whereas Canada is more known for their energy and their financials, and I don't see nearly as much growth in those sectors. And looking at age growth performance ever since its inception, it was doing pretty steadily. Up until the crash, it was up 12.5%. The crash happened and it went down 29.62%. And ever since the crash, we've been up 51% as a recovery. Pretty good. Looking at VEQT, during the March crash, they went down 28%, so the same amount as HGrow. And they've gone up 44.25% since the crash. XEQT went down 27%, so very similar. 
and then has recovered 41.28% since. Horizons, Vanguard, and BlackRock also have all-in-one ETFs that are more conservative as well, and looking at their performances, so this one's is Horizons Balanced. It went down 21% and recovered 35%. Vanguard's Balanced went down 20% and recovered 26%. BlackRock's went down 21% and recovered 29%. So you can see the crashes for all three weren't as bad as the all equity ETFs, but you can see the recovery isn't as strong either. And they have more conservative ones as well. This is Horizons over here. It dropped 15% during the crash, recovered 26%. Vanguards dropped 15% and recovered 20%. And Blackrocks dropped 15% and recovered 21%. And when comparing to one of TD's most aggressive mutual funds, which charges 2.23% fee. It lost 17% from peak to peak. And from that March low up until now, it gained 12% at a 2.23% fee. Now back to HGRO and their holdings. Let's first take a look at the Horizons US large cap index ETF. And you have the biggest public companies in the US. Apple makes about 6.26% of the entire index. Microsoft 5.56. Amazon, Facebook, Google, Johnson & Johnson, Visa, NVIDIA, Tesla, MasterCard, all names that you probably know. Looking at the chart, if we were to have invested in 2008-2009 after the crash, the index was worth 670 points. Today, we're looking at just under 4,000. So after about 11-12 years, you would have made about 5.7 times your original investment. The next one, we have 22.75% in the NASDAQ 100. In this one, we have a lot of overlapping companies. Again, Apple at 13.28%, Microsoft at 10.62%, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, NVIDIA, so on and so forth. And if we were to have invested 11, 12 years ago, we would have made 880%. This year has been crazy though. Since the March crash, we're up 70%. Looking at the international markets, there are a lot of international companies that I don't know, but the main ones that I do recognize are Nestle, AstraZeneca, Toyota, Sony, and HSBC. And over the last 11, 12 years, you would have made 100%. But you can see we've traded sideways for years now. That's why me personally, I mostly invest in US stocks, but that's just my strategy. Looking ahead at the Canadian equities, if we had invested 11 years ago during that peak, we would have made 121%. We have names like RBC at 7.68%, Shopify at 7%, TD Bank, Canadian National Railway, Enbridge, Scotiabank, Brookfield, Barrick Gold, so on and so forth. And lastly, European equities. We would have made 2.8 times our original investment had we invested 11 or 12 years ago. And that's why H was my favorite all-in-one ETF. The holdings, the weighting of those holdings, and the easiness of just funding your money and then forgetting about it. I mean, you could pick your own ETFs and stocks and forget about it too, but if not, H grows the way to go, in my opinion. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. As well, drop me a comment, let me know what you think of Horizons Growth ETF. As well, if you're a new trader in Canada and want to use Quest Trade or Wealthsimple, use my links below. We'll both get free money. See you guys in the next video.